Hi everyone, I'm Sue Posberg. I am co-owner of Windswept Sheep or Windswept Acres Sheep Farm located in Branchburg, New Jersey. I do the farming and the sheep operation with our son Christian Posberg and husband Kevin Posberg. Uh, the name of our farm is Windswept Sheep or Windswept Acres. It's named after my parents' property, which was located in Pittstown, New Jersey. The small farm was located on top of a hill and always has a breeze, hence the reason my parents named it Windswept. In our life, uh, we've raised uh, sheep, beef cattle, dairy cattle, pigs, chickens, peafowl, turkeys, ducks, quail, pheasants, uh, guinea hens, and we had a horse. Right now, we currently raise sheep, chickens, pigs, and a few guinea hens. Currently, it is my husband and I who do the day-to-day -day operations. We get up at 5.30 or 6. We have two dogs, let our dogs out, feed them, let them out. Then we go check the sheep, give them feed, make sure they have water and hay, check the chickens, check the pigs. Most of our sheep are on grass, but we do supplement with some grain, and we started using pro high-protein tubs um, or high-fat tubs made by a couple different vendors or suppliers uh, the last, last year and a half. It just gives them uh, a little bit extra uh, when the pasture tends to dry out. Right now they're on pasture, so where they actually have free choice to, to grass. A dry lot is more where we will feed a concentrate like grain, a smaller area for them to move in as well as they would get cured hay versus being able to eat grass. Currently we are breeding. Um, we have four separate breeding groups. We have three Romney groups and we have one Dorset group. We are breeding to lamb in the middle of January and our breeding season will last 45 to 50 days so we should finish by the middle of March. We like to anticipate when we will have lambs so we are currently using a marking system with our rams. We are using rattle powder which is just a pigmented powder which is mixed with mineral oil and applied to the ram's breastbone. So when he mounts the ewes, you can easily identify that that, ram, that ewe has been serviced. Our son has a, a PhD in genetics, so he set up the breeding groups. He wants us to produce the best Romneys and the best Dorsets. So he looks at their genetic profile, the dams and the rams, or dams and sires of the sheep, and then matches them respectively. He takes it into account looking at you know the fiber, if it's a coarse fiber, if we want to go to a finer fiber for a Romney to ensure that it's in the breed standard. He looks at different characteristics like that. He also has enrolled us in NSIP, which is the National Sheep Improvement Program by ASI, which looks at genetics and breeding values and things that we can improve by using selective breeding. You give them the data and they give you back the calculations and they estimate breeding values. So things that are very heritable, they will give you a, a value and you can base or select on characteristics that's in your plan. So we have white and natural colored Romneys. Uh, currently we have more white than natural colored. Uh, we are breeding for recessives. We like Romneys because they're a dual purpose breed. We can get the fiber from them as well as they also will produce a favorable carcass, especially with the Romneys with the natural colored. We can get different variations of blacks and or grays as well as uh, the more prominent white. Our flock right now is primarily white. It goes depending on which year. Sometimes we have more white ewes. You know, we are looking to produce fleeces with different colors for hand spinners. Anybody can dye white, but even with the natural colored, which can be dyed, some of the variations and the colors just are exciting. We sell breeding stock, which is registered Romneys and Dorsets, uh, feeder lambs, we sell freezer lambs, and then for the fiber end, we also sell our, our fibers, which we normally have our sheep's are used coated throughout the year and then we heavily skirt them to sell the fiber. We also have some processed roving which was done by a local vendor. Some of the other things we also have are some pelts and this is just one of our pelts from one of our recess of freezer lambs. One of the ways that we keep our, our fleeces clean when they're on the animals is to coat them. So they are coats that are specifically made uh, for sheep 
It keeps most of the fleece clean with most of the debris out of the fleece. This makes it a much more desirable fleece for a hand spinner. If you plan to use coats, uh, you need to have various sizes. When they're young, you can be changing a coat every two to three weeks. They are usually sized in length. Once they are an adult, probably once or twice a year because of the, the growth of the fleece. The coats minimize the hay, but they actually can still get some vegetative matter in, in what's called the bird's nest. Uh, we actually have hay feeders, which is a slanted feeder made for hay and squares so they can pull out a small amount at a time. Especially if you're for fleece sales or if you're going to be marketing your fleece, you don't want to just be throwing hay in at the animals. You know, I grew up on a dairy farm, so have always been around animals all my life. Uh, when my daughter was in fifth grade, she actually called from school and asked if she could bring home the chicks that they had hatched at school. So that was the beginning of livestock on our farm. Uh, I believe it was in 2000, uh, my husband was able to bring home an orphaned lamb, and that's how we started in the sheep business. Um, with two orphaned lambs, unfortunately one passed away but the other one was our, our foundation female and lived for 16 years. When we first got into it, it was more for a 4-H project with our children and it was kind of hard to transition from 4-H to a money-making activity. So even though my son was in 4-H and my daughter was in 4-H, I wish we had done more of a business plan and written down some of our goals, what we wanted to achieve and wanted to strive for rather than just like, oh, the kids are gonna show sheep we've been in it 20 years. I think we, you know, the last 10 years we have focused more on fleeces and productive views, good quality fleeces, good quality carcasses. Had we started that 20 years ago versus 10, I think we would be in a different spot. My kids actually were quite involved in poultry for a while in 4-H and I never thought my children would ever have poultry or, or chickens or we would have the assortment of poultry that we have had over the years. But it, it's been fun and I learned a lot. I was even a 4-H poultry leader. So really, uh, that was interesting and very eye-opening for me to learn a lot about birds. A couple things surprised me, how I don't want to get rid of any animals, and that's just not practical. We don't have the acreage and we don't have the, the barn. So, uh, you know, going into it, I probably would have put up a different barn design or something, you know, our facility is more based for 10 sheep, not 40, but we make it work. And the other thing that kind of is surprising is how calming it can be just to be out with your animals and just enjoy them when they walk up to you or you know my husband calls them pets we do have a, a calm group of sheep and more recently the other thing that has been very interesting is with my son being interested in genetics we really are more into the recessive natural colored romneys and some of the color patterns that come out that you can actually predict what color the adults will be or how symmetrical some of the color patterns are when they're born. You know, if somebody was going into farming today, I would like them to know, especially if they were going into sheep or some type of livestock operation, to really pick an animal or pick a breed that you love. This is a 24-7 job. So if you don't love it and if you're not passionate about it, it's going to become drudgery or work. Sometimes, yeah, if it's snowing, do I want to feed the, the sheep? No, but I, I still do because I want to go out and check them and, and it's my passion. One of the other things that I think we found important and even as my children were in 4-H and we had market lambs, feed quality is important. Whether you're, you're buying hay or whether you're buying a, a concentrate or a pre-mixed feed, you know, cheapest isn't always best and local isn't always best. You know, there's quite a few feed stores around. You may have to drive a little bit, you know, maybe an extra 15 or 20 minutes, but the quality of feed is very important. We have evaluated feed just by watching our animals and keeping an eye on what they seem to need. We do provide them uh, free choice mineral at all times, a loose mineral. But over the years, and as I said, we've been in this 20 years, we have seen different effects from the from feeding different feeds. It's more palatable to a sheep if it's a fresh feed than one that's been sitting at a, a more of a generic farm store for a month before it goes off the shelf. Really maintain records on your animals. That's one of the reasons we went into NSIP, but we also try to weigh our lambs every week. We record when we give shots or 
if someone's been sick and needs to be treated, uh, and temperatures. And if you have that data, you can always go back to it and look at it and improve. So it's really important if you're starting out to have a network or someone that you can rely on or ask questions. We've worked with other breeders in the state of New Jersey to learn some tips and tricks and actually learn those skills on how to fit a sheep. At home, we are redesigning our dry lots and our pens to make it more efficient and easier to work and feed the animals when they're in the winter and during lambing. And then the other thing that we have just started, and that was last year, was the NSIP. You know, the NJ Fiber Shed, uh, one, I would like to get more involved and help out the other core members, but I also kind of want to educate the public, get our farm name out there, and really do more of a education as well. We love our sheep, we love our Romneys and our Dorsets. They're both very different, but they both serve their purpose.